Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. If low testosterone is associated with depression, anxiety, and depersonalization, does that mean testosterone cures depression? Obviously not. However, testosterone is obviously involved in mood regulation and mood dysregulation. It's a rather complex mechanism involving both testosterone and its metabolites, estrogen and DHT, and also the interaction of these hormones with the neurotransmitters. So you've got testosterone positively impacting dopamine and estrogen positively impacting serotonin. So surely that should mean whack up the dose of testosterone, improve your dopamine and get that reward, that sense of achievement, pleasure that we're all seeking desperately seeking dopamine. It surely means whack up the dose of estrogen to give you that serotonin, that happiness neurotransmitter. We all want to be happy. What is happiness? It's a state of mind. It isn't a testosterone of 40, an estrogen of whatever. It isn't a quantitative number. It's a state of mind, a qualitative sense of your well-being, and it's not a permanent thing. Testosterone should not make you happy. Testosterone should give you the motivation, the drive and the determination to take risks. Considered risks. Not the risks that we took that got us sat here in front of me looking at YouTube videos about low testosterone. Those risks, albeit fun, were ultimately deleterious to your physical and psychological well-being. Disappointing, because hindsight's a wonderful thing. And if we look back, we can surely go, mm, shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done it quite so much, quite so often, and not considered my health. I was invincible. You were invincible until you were no longer invincible. And ultimately, the choices that we make define our future. So it doesn't matter because you are here right now. And what you do right now is of consequence and significance, not what you did in the past. We've all made mistakes, countless mistakes. So. There is a no judgment zone here at the Men's Health Clinic. I really don't care what you've done. You could have banged in gear. You could have eaten yourself into type two diabetes. Which is worse? Should I be judging you for the choices that you made? No, because what you do right now is of significance. So what should you do right now? You should be mindful. You should be living in the moment. And that's something that we struggle because obviously we live in a world full of anxiety because anxiety is keeping us alive. Isn't that peculiar? What's he talking about? Well, let's go back to when you guessed it, hunter gatherer days. So you've got your innate autonomic nervous system. You've got your sympathetic drive. You've got your adrenaline, your neuro neuroadren noradrenaline. You've got your cortisol. And these are floating around the body, keeping you alert, reactive, so that you can either hunt that deer, run away from that saber-toothed tiger, or sense danger and react accordingly. What you've got on the other side of the seesaw is your calming hormones, your anabolic hormones. So you've got testosterone, drive and determination, motivation, self-confidence. You've got your estrogen, empathy and insight, understanding. You've got your DHT, aggression and libido. Now, does that mean that you need to whack up the dose of DHT to be aggressive? Not aggressive, have a high libido? No, because obviously everything has to be in balance. One of the symptoms of low estrogen is a low libido. Does that mean then you should have high estrogen to have a high libido? No, it just means that everything should be balanced. 
There is a wonderfully complex mechanism within the body that strives to achieve balance. And what do we do? Abuse the crap out of it. We are our own worst enemy. As I've said numerous times before, we can positively impact our psychology by positively impacting our physiology and really understanding our physiology. So when we talk about anxiety, it's literally your autonomic nervous system, your cortisol firing, not understanding what's going on. So what do we need to do? We need to hopefully process the things that are causing anxiety. That's difficult. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, is it? Mm, um, live in the moment and do what we need to do to achieve a sense of calm and perspective. So, as you guys know, I recently went on the Wim Hof expedition to Poland because I was stressed and I understand the concept of nature positively impacting psychology. So it was amazing. It was essentially a reboot. What can you think about in two degree water? Nothing. All of those worries that you're occupied with 24 seven go out the window because your autonomic nervous system goes, all right, mate, you need to concentrate. You need to concentrate on your breath. You need to calm down. Otherwise, we're going to panic and we are going to be in trouble. So you can consciously manipulate your physiology if you understand it. So your psychology can positively impact your physiology. Your physiology can positively impact your psychology. So what else should you do? You should be mindful. What does that mean? Does that mean you have to sit and meditate all day, every day? No, it doesn't really. It means you need to concentrate on the task at hand. Be 100% focused. 100% determined to do the task at hand, not be distracted by distractions. It's incredibly important. What else should you do? You should be a good person. What does that mean? I don't know, that's for you to decide. But every interaction I have with a human being, an animal or anything, I try and make it positive because we are literally a mirror. So we had a very peculiar uh, exercise at the Wim Hof expedition. I had to look at another man in the eye and not talk for a fair few minutes. It was uncomfortable to start off with. I always look people in the eye. It's a matter of respect, but I'm always communicating. I'm always talking. I'm reading cues. So this exercise, was a little bit alarming. Why? I don't know. It's not really alarming, is it? Looking somebody else in the eye and not saying anything. The exercise really is, again, self-reflection. You don't know that person that you're looking at, but your feelings are literally a mirror. So we had to describe the person after we stopped looking into their eyes. And it was all positive. You've got a beautiful soul. You're clearly a lovely person and blah, 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 blah. But what it's really saying is ultimately we are nice people. Ultimately, we all want the same thing. We want to be positive. We want love. We want all of these things that seem so far away. So when you've got low testosterone, and you think, well, I don't feel any of these positive things, so I want to have high testosterone. Disappointingly, that's not the fact. So you need to have a carefully balanced TRT protocol to see that glass as either half empty or half full, and you need to consciously decide to see it as glass half full, because you can still see it as glass half empty. It's a matter of choice. And whilst testosterone is involved, it's not the only thing. So disappointingly, don't think testosterone is going to cure your depression. However, we have got countless people off of antidepressants because the cause of their low testosterone 
or what contributed to it significantly it had a massive impact was low testosterone. We've had people say that they were suicidal prior to TRT. So do not underestimate the importance of testosterone, but understand it is merely a foundation for you to build upon. How you build upon that foundation is up to you. I can only optimize your levels to give you the tools, hopefully, to choose to be glass half full.